Good morning, church. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. It's great to have you here with us this morning. Um, welcome to the you folk at home as well, enjoying your nice warm rooms. It's, it's warm here too, just so you know, if you want to come down. Um, thanks for joining us. It, um, I'm hoping, again, um, like always, that the songs that we choose for you this morning will, will point you in, in the direction of our God and that... Um, that God's Spirit might move through you to worship Him in a way which honours Him. So let's stand together, shall we? And we'll um, sing a song which is kind of in my head as an oldie but a goodie, but I kind of like it. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for drawing us here this morning. Lord, yeah, open our hearts to you. Um, Lord, like I said before, may your spirit move through us this morning to, um, to glorify you, 
to, um, yeah, to be with us, to, to give us courage, to, um, yeah, to heal us. Father, we thank you for your presence with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. This is, um, I really love the chorus of this song. When all I see is the battle, you see the victory.
more puffed from singing through the mask. Sorry, I'll catch my breath. <laughs> um, I'm doing communion this morning, um, and I was, I've was i read through all of the, um, the Gospels, the Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and when I was reading Luke, there was some really key points that really hit me hard and reminded me. Luke 22, 14 to 16. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined to the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus eagerly desired to spend his time with his friends, his disciples. Jesus eagerly desires to spend time with us in a relationship. And a relationship's not just about us talking to him, but it's about spending time. It's like those two words, eagerly desired. They just... Oh. Continuing on, Luke 22, 17 to 20. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and he said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, This is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which he has poured out for you. And the phrase that really hit me was in Luke 19. This is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus wants us to remember him, not just give thanks for what he's done for us or apologise for our sin that separates for us. He wants us to remember him. So in this time, before we take our communion together, I want you to remember Jesus, the man who was fully human, who came onto earth for us. It says it right there. This is my body given to you for us. He is fully human. He was born into this world. He's experienced everything we have experienced. If you're a child, he's experienced what you're going through. If you're a teen, he's been there. He's done that. And for all of us adults, he knows what we're going through. He lived it. He's experienced it. He's had the same tools we have, the scriptures, the Father in prayer and the Holy Spirit. So if he had didn't sin, then we can use those tools to help us through our life. Jesus, do this in remembrance of me. So in this time, instead of just reflecting about your sin or thanking him for those things, I'd like you to pick a story and remember him from when he was here because he's asked us to do this in remembrance of him. So I'll give us some time to reflect and take the bread in our own time and then we'll pray together and drink. Father, thank you that you have given us your word to help guide us through our life. Jesus, thank you for being your eternal example written in your living word to remind us of what you have done for us. Thank you for giving us small snippets within this word to really floor us and remind us of what you want us to do. Let's drink together.
has a response to the time we've just shared together. Uh, that likes to sing uh, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. I really enjoy the, the chorus of this new chorus. My chains are gone, I've been set free. You know? Amen. Yeah, exactly. Hallelujah. Let's, um, let's stand as we sing this, shall we?
unending love, amazing grace. Have a seat. Morning, everyone. Good to see you here. Oh, it's the last time we're going to see Kevin and Liz here with us in person. I know. Right. Um, anyway, we're going to invite them up now to join us, just to be able to say, Dominic's got microphones for us, yeah, to be able to, in their own words, So well, as those of you who don't know uh, Kevin and Liz, um, or if you're watching this um, or checking us out, these guys have been with us for quite a while now and been um, critical, really, for a lot of what we do here. They've been instrumental volunteers and ministry leaders. Kevin's been across all of our property uh, developments and maintenance and things like that. He's put in hours and hours and hours. Uh, we had a baptism. Uh, if you'd seen what needed to happen for that to get plumbed um, behind us. And... Um, and he'd work really hard for a day or so, and then he'd be sore for days. And he'd come back and he'd work again, and he'd be sore again. Um, that was Kevin. Liz has been leading across and mentoring um, and prayer warrior, warrioring, try and say that, <coughs> amongst us for quite a while. It's been an enormous blessing for the work with the kids, but also um, for a lot of our ladies and for me and for lots of us too. And we're really grateful for their time here. But anyway, I thought I'd give you guys a chance to just uh, use your own words there. Uh, I didn't really know where we were going to speak, have to say something this morning, and so um, th throughout our lives, I think I've been involved in four churches. One as a kid, then we moved to Springvale and became involved in Dingley Union Church, where I met my lovely wife. <laughs> she looked a lot younger in those days. <laughs> um, and then... We moved, and after we were married, we moved to Upper Beaconsfield and we were involved in the Berry Church of Christ for 35, 36 years. And then we moved to Druin, where our kids grew up and our family uh, all accepted the Lord there and, uh, and that was a pretty special time for us too. Then we moved to Druin and we looked around for another church family and we came here and we have been very much at home here. And I just enjoyed the, uh, the acceptance, the love, and uh, yeah, the fellowship we've had here. And I just want to encourage each one of you here as we go across to the West to spend our last few years, <laughs> <laughs> and it is probably true, with, our, <laughs> with, with two of our kids that are over there, and uh, they want to look after us in our old age, they say, so I'm going to let Murray push me around in my wheelchair. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just want to encourage each one of you to, to still hang, hang in there with the church and be, um, just be encouraged to, uh, to continue to enjoy each other's friendship and fellowship throughout your life because uh, if we forsake the gathering together, as it says in the scripture, our flame will, 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 will dwindle and fall and, and burn out. But together, we, are, we can uh, burn strong and uh, influence others for Christ. So I just want to thank uh, Danny and Dana and Dominic for, for all the times they've allowed me to wander in here and make a mess and do stuff that uh, I've had lots of help too. I've, I have certainly haven't done it on my own. But it's been, uh, it's been exciting times, and I want to thank you. Um, when we left our church at Berwick, I said to God, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is my family. What am I going to do without my family of 35 years? And he clearly said to me, don't you think if I take you out of one family, I'll have another family ready for you, and you are it. Mm -hmm. Here we are, and I love it. There is nothing on earth like the church and we've been so grateful to be here and 
I love the church and I think what Kevin said is so true. Value it and value the relationships and build one another up and encourage one another. The very first day we came to church here, there was, we used to have those little paper, yeah. I don't know, notice things. News, I think they were called News. newsletters. <laughs> were they? Yeah, newsletter, that's it. And I read the, um, there was a little blurb on the cover and this is what it said and I kept it because it said to me, this is the heart of this church. It said, the day is coming when nothing will count except how people responded to Jesus Christ. We can smile and try to be like our neighbours or we can reject the dreams of this culture and with our words and actions call lost people to follow Christ. I go, yes, be disciples and make disciples. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thanks for being our family. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We will pray for Kevin and Liz, but we've got a few other announcements uh, first, so we'll wrap them up. Um, Josh. Where's Josh? Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Yeah, right. Um, uh, my wife and Jenny and Simon would have loved to have been here, but they can't. They've been up this morning since 3 o'clock. And, yep, yep, all good. And, yeah, Simon has been unwell, and we've had to cancel his party today, so it's really unfortunate. So he gets to miss his second birthday. So hopefully we can, you know, reschedule it again. But the reason I'm here is, um, you know, I suppose listening to God's will, listening to God's call for your life. And I have resigned my position at a, as a youth pastor here. It's been hard, but it's been um, just trying to work out ministry, where I fit in, um, in my context, how do I serve God. And in Psalm 61, it says, now how do we serve God? Um, how do we keep our vows in serving and leading his people in our context. And that's the promise um, Jonathan made, Jonathan, uh, David made to God. And so for me, in my context, I'm trying to work out if I'm going to be in ministry for long term, what does that look like for me here? So I've had a lovely, wonderful here, here. I, you know, I've had the best of the best experience here, full of life, oh, young people, families. Oh, it's been a blessing. I loved every moment. Here. I've had really good support from the elders. Had, you know, Danny and I, we're good mates. Um, I have beautiful support from you. And I suppose Kevin Lee, as you said, it's about building the church up, building one another up. And here for me, perhaps there's another family out there waiting. But thank you so much for everyone for supporting us and our family. Thanks, Josh. Um, in other news that some of you might not know, uh, James Neve and Erin Sprague got engaged. <laughs> um, if you're not connected with someone who's connected to someone who's connected to someone who's connected to them on Facebook, you wouldn't know that. <clears throat> um, but we thought you should all know it's, it's hard with this COVID thing with lockdown because stuff happens in the family and and not everyone can see it straight away. But congratulations, James and Erin. That's very, very exciting. Um, all right, another one uh, for you. Uh, Dana, where's Dana? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm shaking up here. Okay, just I'm going to read my notes. It's with a touch of sadness and trepidation, but with lots of excitement, that I'm letting you all know that in eight weeks, I'll be finishing up here at CCW. <laughs> Don't make it hard. Huh? <laughs> it's eight weeks, it's a long way away. Um, although very happy and content here with our lives, 
Um, we've recently felt um, the leading to something different, we always looking at what's coming next. Um, and we weren't sure what that was, but we were seeking. We were looking um, and to see where God would take us. So in the last two weeks, um, we've been offered the opportunity, Colin and I, to manage a property, a 430-acre property, <laughs> in Limpenwood on the New South Wales-Queensland border. It's in the Tweed Valley, so although this Gippsland is lovely, it's, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> um, Colin will be in charge of the grounds, the maintenance and the livestock, and I'll be managing the office, the accommodation and running events. I can't tell you um, how privileged I've been for so many years to be employed here at, um, at this church. I'm extremely thankful for the experiences and the knowledge that I've gained over this time. And they've all come to prepare me for what's, um, what's ahead, what our next chapter is. And I love how God does that. I wanted to encourage you um, that God is a good God. He has your life every single day, um, even sometimes when you don't understand it. I want to encourage you to trust him in every way. He knows your future, and who knows, maybe um, for you. <laughs> All right, I'll be around, so chat to after. Thanks. <laughs> uh, so if I've felt a little distracted to you over the last few weeks... Maybe you can get a grasp on why. Um, uh, and when I preached, you know, Moses is dead, Joshua. So just, you know, you do it. So look forward to, because God's still God. And look back at what God has done. It's been God and God and God, and now it's going to be God later. This is not what I had in mind. <laughs> um, but God knows um, all of that. So we're just going to, we're going to pause and pray. Uh, Jesus, we've been so grateful to have Kevin and Liz amongst us, and we, uh, we pray blessing for them, God. As they go west, um, may, they, may they feel your touch, may they know your hand on their life, and may more and more people know you better because of their life. Increase their influence, God. Give them um, just in, in, this, in these uh, twilight years, in their own words, in these twilight years, God, increase their influence. And, um, and give them a church family that they can uh, really sink into and be part of and encourage. God, thank you for Josh, for his heart, for his courage, for his honesty, for his integrity, uh, for his capacity too. God, we, uh, we love him. And as he discerns this next season, Father, we pray that you give him clarity and joy. Help him to enjoy his moments with you, his life with you. We pray for Josh, Jen. Uh, Samuel, uh, Father, guide them in this next patch um, and, um, and help them to feel, uh, to know your presence and your love for them and your joy over them and your provision for them in this season. Uh, we're going to miss Dana, God. And um, some of us uh, who work with her uh, know how much she puts in for us here, the, the over and above nature of her um, of her work, of her leadership amongst us. Uh, this facility uh, is transformed under her leadership, under your guidance through her guidance. Um, and we pray uh, for Colin and Dana in this new season, God. May you increase their influence too. May they hang on to you with both hands. May they shine a light bright for you uh, up there where it's sunnier. <laughs> mm. And may we hear reports from them of your provision for them um, and your work through them. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Whew. Um, a few weeks ago, I um, heard from David and Tina Cannon. They're in Thailand. And that was a good conversation. And I asked them to record a little video message for us about the work they're doing there. Um, it's a few weeks old now, but we're waiting for this Scent series to be able to show you this. So this is David and Tina. Greetings, friends at uh, Community Church Warrigal. Thank you very much for your prayers for us and your support in other ways. Uh, right now, we're in Bangkok, Thailand, 
Uh, Thailand at the moment is suffering somewhat from COVID, about 2,000 cases a day. Uh, we ourselves are fine and uh, we normally stay in the one location. Um, so uh, thank you for your prayers. It is uh, a kind of difficult time for missionaries in Thailand. We have to uh, find new ways of keeping in touch with uh, believers and new ways of uh, reaching out to new, new folk. So it is a time for us to be creative in looking at how the Lord may lead us. Uh, one thing, for example, is uh, online ministry is, is growing and that, that's a good opportunity for us as well. There's a, 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 one of our colleagues has set up uh, Bible studies online and uh, in the last couple of weeks he's had 180 people um, register to do Bible study. So pray for that. Uh, re re recently, uh, some of our families and singles, uh, because of COVID and other circumstances, have had to leave the field. So um, it is uh, affecting us as a missionary force. Um, and in the last two years, we've had very few people um, come back to Thailand who are already missionaries or have new workers come. So we are affected by, by this in lots of ways. So thank you very much for your prayers and feel free to contact us anytime. It's David and Tina. Uh, we'll try to bring you some more of that from uh, Liz Pfeiffer and Mark and Alex too in the next few weeks. Um, it's good to hear. It's good to see our missionaries and it's good to hear from them um, as well. All right. Uh, this is the... Oh, by the way, just on those positions now, youth pastor, facility um, manager, will be uh, advertising soon. So if you know someone who's awesome, who would be awesome in those roles, can let me know. Because uh, I'm uh, qu quite happy to tap someone on the shoulder, even if I have to you know, go a long way to do so, to find the right person uh, that, um, you know, who God might want to bring here to bless us in those roles. All right. Uh, we're going to hear the word of God, so let's just uh, pray again. God, uh, um, there's lots going on in our heads now. Uh, help us to focus now and listen to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, we're in the, uh, the mid-year school holidays, and so for the sake of our kids and for the child inside all of us, would you please welcome Matt. Hi, kids. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi Matt. Thanks for helping us out with what are, what are you doing? Hey, it's fine. It's fine. Carry on. Oh, we're, in a, we're in a series called Scent. Um, and you were going to tell the kids uh, what it means that we're all. What are you doing? Exactly. What? Oh. <laughs> Stop it. What is that? This is my scent. Matt, we're not doing that kind well, of... Well, I say my scent, but it's yours too. We're all sent. I think you're confused, Matt. When we say sent, we mean that we're all on mission, that we're all sent by Jesus, you know, to other people with... The fragrance of the knowledge of God. What? <laughs> Stop it. It's not that kind of scent we mean. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. It's in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians. Uh, yes, but... Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. Okay, now I'm confused. So yeah. we're sent with a scent. <laughs> Matt, I don't know if you're helping. Okay, uh, so here's my point. Oh, good. But... The English language is really stupid. <laughs> What? How can something be sent and sent? And how do you know which one it is? They're, well, they're spelled differently, Matt. Oh, yeah, that's going to be really helpful when people say them. When people say words, <laughs> can you see how they're spelled? Well, no. <laughs> no, you just hear them. Here's how you say this word. S-E-N-T. You ready? Okay. Sent. <laughs> and now, 
Let's add a random C after the S, change the whole meaning of the word. Here's how you say it. Ready? Sent. <laughs> Can you even hear the difference? Sent. Sent. <coughs> right, we're not here That's to... That's right. The C is completely silent, like a calm day at the beach. Yeah, can we just get back English to... English is complicated. Like, there's no grape in grapefruit, no ham in hamburger, there's no egg in eggplant, there's no pine nor apple in pineapple. Why is the plural of brother brethren, but the plural of mother isn't methren? Why is it oxen and not oxes? How, come, how do you fill in a form by filling it out? How does an alarm clock go off as it comes on? What are you talking about? I thought you were talking about words that sounded the same, you know, sent and sent. Oh, homophones. Don't get me started on homophones, like the medieval assassin who threw his dart through the window, and where it was thrown, there was a throne, and the wind blew it into the blue pictures so that the darts hit those prints and not the prints. And he was mad. <laughs> and he was mad, but he shouted, Are you mad? <laughs> Meanwhile, across the world, something was up, it was the river, and they had sandbags to shore up the shore for sure to protect their tents. It was tense. <laughs> and of course, the coarse sandbags were the cause of their blisters in the cause of their work. It was a scene to be seen. <laughs> is, there a, is there a point to all this? Yes, it's complicated. What's complicated, language or your point? Yes, complicated. <laughs> so decomplicated, this is a kid's talk. Okay, decomplicated is not even a word. Oh, you know what I mean. English is hard enough without people just inventitating words out of thin air. <laughs> <Matt>. <laughs> Kids, English is complicated. People are complicated. People are complicated. Yes, some more than others. Oi! <laughs> People are complicated, and we can't we can't make them less complicated. Where are you going with this? Well, God has sent us to, or God has sent us all to other people, and the people are complicated. So, your kids. Your mum and your dad are complicated. Your brother's complicated. Your sister's probably incredibly complicated. <laughs> your teachers are complicated and your friends are complicated. We get it, Matt. People are complicated. Right. So when God sends us to people, he knows they're complicated. So he doesn't expect us to totally understand them because we can't. So people are complicated and we can't understand them. That's your point? Right. Or solve them. We can't solve them either. Or fix them? We can't fix them. We don't know how. We can't tell them what to do. We don't know. No matter how hard they try, it's just that they're complicated. <laughs> does, this, does this have a happy ending? Yes! This! Oh. <laughs> okay, what is that? It's our scent. It's what God smells like. Well, actually, I hope God smells better than eau de toilette. <laughs> this is a bit whiffy. Right. So what does God smell like? That's easy. Love. <laughs> Love, what? So, kids, the people God sent you to, that's everyone you meet, they're all complicated. Just love them like God does. Care about them, listen to them, help them, and tell them about Jesus. Selfless love is the scent that we are sent with. And you know what? Oh, no, that's it. That makes sense! <laughs> so long! <laughs>
or whatever it is that you go, oh, what is that that draws you? We're a bit whiffy in as much as Jesus is in us. In our 24-7 lives, what do we have to offer that smells so good? It's not an actual smell with our nose. It's a metaphor, isn't it, for something else? What can others sense in us that makes them go, what is that in a good way? Is it our opinion <laughs> that that smells so good? You know, that life is like this or like that or our government should do this or that or these people need to learn this or that or I know better and you should listen to me. Is that, is that the fragrance of the knowledge of God? I imagine if someone said to you, you should go and live with these people. They're full of opinions. <laughs> so it's not our opinions is it our knowledge you know the stuff we, the good stuff we know if we can recite a proverb for every situation if we can explain really well why the earth is the way it is and how God fits in and we can have great insight into how people work and we have all this knowledge to impart is that the fragrance of the knowledge of God is that how we spread the knowledge of God by saying the, the, the stuff Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 8? We know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up. Um, there's something else that builds up. What is it? Love. You know what smells beautiful? Love does. We're sent with a scent, and that scent is selfless love. It's not as opposed to truth. Truth comes with love. Truth and love are the same person. <laughs> you try truth without love, like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, you might as well just be banging an empty symbol. If we lose love, we lose everything. If we lose selflessness, we have no message. And truth and love are inseparable. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, Paul says love rejoices with the truth. Um, and we need truth. And I'm not saying we don't need. We need apologetics. We need defense of the faith. We need um, answers to tough questions. Those things are important. Um, but they, they come in on a wave of love, of selfless love. Uh, it's like Paul says in Ephesians 5, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. What was a pleasing aroma to God? Jesus. What? What about Jesus wasn't a pleasing aroma to God? Well, everything, right? But in particularly in what Paul's saying here, what is it about Jesus that was a pleasing aroma to God? His offer, he offered himself as a sacrifice for us. This is the ultimate selflessness. When someone knows stuff and is wise, you might go, that lady is really wise. Um, she knows stuff. Like I have in the last uh, few months, Liz and Candy have come on to the eldership, and I can tell you both those ladies are really wise. At times I've gone, ooh, that's wise. <laughs> um, you might do that. But when someone loves you, you go, I think I can sense something more than just what is contained in that person. I think I'm feeling something bigger than just what we can offer each other. I think actually what I'm smelling here is God. When we're included rapidly, even before we're known that well, you just go, oh, it tingles. When you know in your selfishness that you've hurt someone, and you've got nothing but sorry in that space, and they completely cancel that debt, and they forgive you. Like, that's amazing. It's bigger than them, actually. It's God. Even when we don't know it's God, because lots of people who don't know Jesus do selfless, don't they? Um, and it's God. Um, because he's the source of all that. Without God, there's no love. 
God is love. Mm. And you know, you've experienced that when people give you a shoulder or an ear or hands and resources when you uh, didn't deserve it or you didn't think that they might have and they just do. How do you, how do you describe selfless love? It's hard. But you kind of know it when you're in it. It's Jesus. He loved us and gave himself up for us. Now, <coughs> when you look up, even now you go, what, for me, Father? And he goes, yeah, for you. Um, for you and to win you back. Now you're my child. I'm giving you this love. It's awesome. It's the best. Love will fill you up, satisfy you, and bring you so much joy, and it will fix the world. And I'm sending you with this because I want it spread everywhere. Imagine a selfless world where everyone was entirely motivated by the good of others, not just some others, not just my group, by the good of others, all others. Who wouldn't get looked after? And what heights of creativity and freedom and permission would people have to absolutely fly in the fullness of all that they were created to be? It sounds like heaven, which is where we're heading. <laughs> and that's what God's doing inside me and you right now, motivating that kind of heart um, inside of us, transforming us to be more and more those sort of people. The scent is love, and that's what we're sent with. It's real. There's lots of definitions of love out there. And I had in my notes, first of all, to go through, but I didn't want to disparage um, other things. I just wanted to put it out. You know, there are lots of definitions of love out there. Um, and I find it amazing that people on all sides of that, if you've got my definition of what this is, this is love, this is what it really is, how harsh and horrible I am to everyone who disagrees with me, which is the opposite of love. But I get why there's all those definitions out there because I can sense in other people and in me this desire to be accepted and valued and belong and to be validated and to be significant and to be right and to be okay. And, um, and Jesus is God's answer to all of that. It sounds like a Sunday school kind of solution to a massive problem um, but it is the solution to all of the problems. It is the love of Jesus. Look again at Ephesians 5. Um, who am I? I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a dearly loved child of God. So if, if I just look up for who I am, and I'm not trying to bounce it off all this brokenness around me, what other people think, if I just look up, um, then I get my answers there. Um, and what am I here to do? This. Be selfless. Like, learn to be selfless. Because that's going to smell beautiful to everyone all around me. Um, everyone goes, yeah, I know, I know, Danny, but have you tried this? <laughs> Um, yeah, the struggle is that the most beautiful things in life are often the most counterintuitive to our sinful nature. Because when we're away from God, our hearts are all about, look after me, look after me, see me, validate me, pleasure me, notice me. But as we get close to God, he does this. I'm looking after you, child. I'll look after you, my dearly loved child. And I'll restore your heart with how it was supposed to go. And I'll look after you and I'll fill you up. And I'll give you a heart that just wants to look after others. And that will fill you. And it'll help them and it'll serve them and it'll champion them. And you'll be awesome and you'll be satisfied. And you'll spread this love wherever you go. Every household in our church family is sent with a scent. Next week we're going to talk about how each household and each family can be selfless and beautiful to those outside their world. That's Stacey's role next week. Looking forward to that. Well, I'm going to finish today by focusing on what happens inside our households and regular communities, our life group, our crew, the people we eat with and share space with every week. Inside the relationships with the people uh, we do life with because who does God send us to most? 
It's our family, our crew. Um, it's so sad to me that one of the realities of relationships is that people talk to their spouses in a way they would never talk to anyone else. In, in a bad way, you know what I mean? We say things in those intimate spaces that we would not, you know, we'd be embarrassed to treat somebody else like that outside of that space. Um, when the very people that God's called us to spend most of our time with, to express this with, is our family. Um, uh, you know, you're, uh, I've heard a preacher say this once, I've, I believe it. My wife is my sister in Christ first, and then she's my wife. Um, you know, my husband is my brother in Christ first. That is, I treat them like God wants me to treat other people. I do that first. Um, it's not easy, <laughs> but it is the call. And if we're not that, if we're not working on that at home, then what are we going to, what do we smell like? Um, everywhere else we go. It's the basis of the becoming of who we are. And God's all about the becoming of who we are. Uh, here's the other thing I know about us um, in our homes. A lot of the time we're pretty selfless, especially if you've got young kids. Um, you, well done for all your selfless love. Uh, you've got a lot of time for your young kids. Every act of selfless love you give to look after your baby or toddler is powerful in helping them experience God. Um, our life group now has a couple of young families in it and uh, they've got babies and toddlers and try and have a meaningful discussion you know, around a table with babies and toddlers uh, involved in that space. is more difficult to do, but the love in that space, the exasperated, tired, worn out, all right, I'll just do it, help again kind of love that we see every week. You just go, yes. That's just as important as someone who's on a soup, you know, um, kitchen or, or helping somewhere else or doing what I'm doing now or, or looking after kids out there or serving on the mission field. That love, that every act of selflessness is God. Um, and, um, and if you're tired and you still take time to play with your two-year-old, who won't even remember that later. That's just as beautiful to God as any other selfless act any of us do. Because sharing a house with other people gives us lots of opportunities to be selfless, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes we trust God and we give. Um, if, when your kids get cars, when they get their own cars, but they're still living at home, <clears throat> and you're leaning back in your chair and you're watching TV, not doing anything important, and you think, oh, I've got that urgent errand that just someone's just got to run down the street and... Get something, run out of milk or I don't know, something. And your 18-year-old goes, you guys stay there, I'll go and get it. When you know he doesn't want to do that, you're like, oh, that's awesome. We get opportunities to be selfless. Um, but other times, <laughs> uh, well, in my defense, <laughs> um, you know you're in trouble when you start a sentence with, in my defense. Um, uh, Wednesday nights is um, free nights for me normally because music practice, Dominic's out. She's here um, working with the team um, here and I'm usually home because it's my day off on Wednesdays. And, um, and I've taken to like, getting a few people around playing board games. I love playing board games. So we have this um, uh, group of people I just go, anyone free, we'll just do, do a game thing. Anyway, I had the chance on Wednesday night to do a game. Dominic said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be at music rehearsal this week because I'm not sure if I'm going to be on. Um, I don't know if, we're gonna, uh, if I'm going to need to be out, so just wait until you make game plans. And I went, because I got a text saying, hey, is there, who's free for games on Wednesday? I went, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I kind of thought, well, you know, I'd probably go anyway. But you know when you, when you can rationalise it in your head, but your heart's going, hmm. that's what's happening for me. Uh, then Dominic says, oh, by the way, I'm not going out Wednesday night. I'm home. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm doing this other thing. She's like, oh, I thought we were going to wait. And I went, I would have gone anyway. Like that is my heart. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know when you drive off somewhere and you're not sorted? Oh, it's horrible. 
Um, that's the whole story. <laughs> My point here, selflessness at home is hard. I pick examples um, that are fairly trivial because it's too vulnerable, isn't it, to say the things where you know, you know, where you know. Selflessness at home is hard. Especially when you don't feel like it. Selflessness between siblings is awesome. And kids, if you want to know Jesus better, start by helping your brother or sister. Practice by helping your mum and dad. However young you are, Jesus will help you to be selfless because he wants this for you. He wants this life in you. And the first place we're sent is home to our crew, to our family, to our life group. Our husbands, we're sent to our wives with selfless love. The way we treat her and, um, and our kids is the basis of all our sentness everywhere. And every interaction is significant. Nothing is hidden. Um, everything hidden will be disclosed. What's whispered in the darkness will be shouted from the rooftops. Every interaction is significant, and the extent to which we want God is revealed in the way we treat our wives, our husbands, our kids, and our parents. So think about the people you're with this week. What do they need? What could you do that would let them know that you want the very best for them? If you can't think of anything, ask God, because he's so invested in this. <laughs> and he'll show you. He'll tell you. Let's pray. Our Father, we know that we're sent, and we know that we're sent not with anything that we have to give. We know that all of our righteous acts are worthless, and all of our knowledge is um, just for all of it is a gift from you. We're sent with you, and you are love. You are selfless love. You are truth, and you are light. Um, and most of all, God, you are love. These three things remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to see this, see the relevance and the importance of this, understand that this trumps every other desire and thought that we have. When we feel right, God, help us to love. When we feel offended, God, help us to love. Uh, when we feel hurt, God, help us to love. When we're angry, help us to stop and to be selfless. Um, Father, take us with this scent into our environments, into our homes this week, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Denny. Folks, let's stand and sing, shall we? Um, we've introduced a few songs over the last couple of months, and I'm not sure what it is, but a lot of them talk to me. Perhaps I'm being shouted at, who knows? If you're troubled, heavy hearted, come to Jesus and find your peace. And if you're run down, empty handed, come to Jesus and find your strength. He is hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, help for the hurting. He is, He is. Mending the broken, bearing your burdens, all that you're needing, He is. And if you're wandering in the darkness, come to Jesus and find your Jesus and find your His grace. He is hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, help for the hurting. He is, He is mending the broken, bearing the burden.
comfort, a counselor, prince of peace, author and maker of everything, fender, deliverer, king of kings, he is, he is, helper and healer forevermore, savior and shelter through every storm, refuge, redeemer, the Lord of lords, he is, he is, child of heaven and son of man, provider, protector, the great I am, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, he is, he is, hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, help for the hurting, he is. broken hearing the burdens all that you're needing he is comfort a counselor prince of peace author and maker of everything defender deliverer king of kings he is he is helper and healer forevermore savior and shelter through every storm my refuge redeemer the lord of lords he is he is child of heaven and son of man provider protector the great i am alpha omega beginning and end he is he is hope for the hopeless rest for the weary help for the hurting he is he is mending the broken bearing the burdens all that you need you needing he is and Jesus we we believe that you are all we need and and where we don't believe, God, help us in our unbelief. Help us to hang on to you with both hands. Help us to discover more of your love in our lives uh, to people around us. Uh, help us to want you with all we are. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, hey, sometimes selflessness is hard. And sometimes it's nuanced because you don't know. Sometimes you feel stuck and you go, I don't know how to love this person in this situation that I'm in now. I don't know what that looks like or means. Um, I'd love to talk to you about that or refer you on to someone who can help you with that. We have some great Christian counsellors that operate here through the week, um, meaning they function, not with a knife, you know. They, they, they work over here um, during the week. And, and you, there's help for us to find out how to love. If you don't know how to love, find out how to love. And, um, and then uh, you'll be in a better position to follow Jesus. Uh, if you want prayer this morning, um, come find me. I'd love to pray with you here. I have a fantastic week, last week of the school holidays, for those of you that that matters for. And um, enjoy that. We're back next week. We're talking about how families and households can spread this love outside them. Um, okay. Be blessed. He is hope for the hopeless, rest for the weary, help for the hurting he is. He is mending the broken, bearing the burdens, all that you're needing. He is all that you're needing. He is.